What is going on, Neon Nation? Welcome back to the Neon Arcade for some more Cyberpunk 2077 news. We have a ton to talk about today, including details on a custom Cyberpunk 2077 GPU, GeForce Now vs Stadia, Brain Dance gear, romance details, an amazing new image of Night City, and big Cyberpunk red news and first look images. Get 15% off high quality metal art from Displate, featuring officially licensed designs. Check out the link in the pinned comment and the description. First up, we have a couple new images coming out from a Twitter user who visited CD Projekt Red Studio in what seems to be Krakow. We see the iconic Cardinal and the front desk, but we also see this concept art of what seems to be one of the districts in Night City. This huge wall of concept art really gives you a feel for what the developmental team envisions for this cyberpunk world, and I immediately get vivid images of Ghost in the Shell and Dread as the most similar comparisons to what we can see here. As for what district this could be, we see some power plants in the bottom corner with gas flares which are used in industrial plants to burn off flammable gas released by pressure relief valves. This gives us a big hint that this is Santo Domingo, which is described as the area where all Night City is powered from with its countless power plants and industrial factories. This is a dangerous area due to the toxic products of these plants and we do also see what seems to be a dam in the bottom right corner. Whatever district it may be, it makes me really look forward to what we can see in the concept art books from the game itself as well as some of the images that will be included in the world of Cyberpunk 2077 lore book. Next up we have some amazing news coming out from Nvidia in collaboration with Cyberpunk 2077. Nvidia has had a relationship with CDPR ever since Cyberpunk 2077 announced it would be utilizing ray tracing in 2077 which will allegedly give the best graphical experience possible. They are currently taking this partnership one step further with the announcement of the RTX On sweepstakes where you can win a limited edition Cyberpunk 2077 RTX 2080 Ti which I have to say looks absolutely brilliant. On Nvidia's official page they say quote, we've made just 200 of these Cyberpunk 2077 GPUs, they won't be sold but you can potentially win one. Each has a custom AL5052 aluminum shroud with Cyberpunk 2077 signature styling and powerful GeForce RTX 2080 Ti hardware underneath. And of course it comes gift wrapped in a special edition Cyberpunk 2077 box, perfect for a collector's shelf. Nvidia is giving away 77 of these and to enter the sweepstakes, all you have to do is head to the GeForce Twitter, Instagram or Facebook page and retweet, like or comment on their RTX on sweepstakes post. So for example on Twitter you would retweet this video and tag a gamer who is as excited as you about Cyberpunk 2077 along with the hashtag RTX on to be entered. You as well as the person you just tagged are then entered to win. Now if you don't have anyone on Twitter to tag you can always tag your boy the Neon Arcade but I know Mad Queen and Paris have been super super excited about this so consider tagging them as well. Keep an eye out for CDPR to be giving these away in the future and charity events where these can potentially be bought or won. The Cyberpunk Twitter page has mentioned this is just the beginning, so maybe there will be another version or more releasing in the future since 200 makes it incredibly exclusive. We also have another announcement from Nvidia that Cyberpunk 2077 will be a title for GeForce Now which is Nvidia's cloud gaming service along the same lines of Google Stadia and Microsoft's Project xCloud. On the Nvidia updates and announcement page we have a statement from Corey at Nvidia stating, quote, Hi everyone, happy to share some exciting news. Cyberpunk 2077 will be available on GeForce Now the day it's released. GeForce Now members will be able to grab their copy on Steam and play the game the moment it's available. GeForce Now founders members can explore the streets of Night City with RTX on, fully optimized and instantly available even on your Mac laptop. Stay tuned for more news. This is another big announcement which followed Stadia's recent statements of having Cyberpunk 2077 on launch as well. Initially the Stadia version was to be released sometime after April 16th, but now with the delay it will be on Stadia the day it comes out. Moving on we have a new image shared by Cyberpunk 2077 for Valentine's Day this year. If you guys remember last year they showcased this chromed out cupid sporting this giant pink sniper rifle for Valentine's Day and this year they delivered another really awesome image from the cyberpunk world. This woman who I think is oddly reminiscent of Sandra Dorset from the first 48 minute demo is featured wearing this headset or headgear piece of some sort which is being used to watch what seems like a steamy brain dance. 
With the caption, no plans for Valentine's Day, solo is always a good option, this likely refers to the fact that this brain dance is highly sexual in nature, and that with brain dance you don't really need another flesh and bone human to have a little fun. The panels on the headset emit these hearts onto the eyes of this character, and from what we know about brain dance so far, we know that many of these experiences have to do with romantic extracurriculars. Brain dances are essentially virtual reality on steroids where the viewer feels all the stimuli, including motor impulses and emotions associated with whatever is happening in the brain dance recording they're viewing. Back in the E3 2018 trailer, the brain dance headset seemed to be more of what we know as a traditional VR headset in our modern day world, but the Mad Queen also noticed how during the Grimes performance at the VGAs, the same type of headset was used. Now we initially thought this was for net running as the rest of the video seemed like it was most likely in the net. In hindsight, it could also be a brain dance. Now Mad Queen did a great video on some of these theories, so I will link that video in the description for you guys to check out. In any case, I love this image as a whole, she has a really rocker girl-ish style, and the new look of the brain dance headgear is fantastic as well. In the same vein when it comes to discussing romances, a Reddit user pulled up an old but overlooked tweet from CDPR developer Mateusz Tomeszkiewicz where we learn more about gay, lesbian, bi, and straight relations and how they're balanced in Cyberpunk 2077. In the Twitter thread, a user asks about how attractive the gay romance option will be, to which Mateusz responds with he thinks he's a stud, but also mentions a female gay romance option. Another user chimes in with a follow-up comment mentioning that if we only get one gay and lesbian option, that they hope that the straight options are balanced and that there's more bisexual options, to which Mateusz responds with everyone will get equal amounts of quality content when it comes to romances, relationships, and options in Night City. Now again, this was an older tweet, so as always, things are subject to change. Next up, we have some amazing details from our Talsorian and Cyberpunk Red. If you guys tuned into the Cyberpunk 2077 community podcast on this channel last Sunday, you know that we got the chance to premiere two new Cyberpunk Red images for the first time thanks to Jay Gray and the guys at Artal Saurian. What we showed were these two images which will be featured in the full release of Cyberpunk Red, which is a tabletop RPG primer to Cyberpunk 2077, which will take place in the 2040s, after Cyberpunk 2020 and before 2077. There's a full tabletop RPG rule set as well as world lore, and with that being said, our Talsorian also now has a tentative release date. You'd remember the initial release date was for 2019 before Cyberpunk 2077 was delayed, and so our Talsorian is taking the time to polish up their work that will be releasing pre-2077. In a blog post, they reveal their new hopeful release date by saying, quote, There's a rumor around the internet that Cyberpunk Red Core will be out in June. We're stamping this one as partially true. Here's the details. As some keen-eyed screwheads have noted, we originally announced an August 2019th release date for Cyberpunk Red Core. However, the need to work with CD Projekt Red to make sure the lore of the Cyberpunk universe runs smooth from 2013 to 2020 to Red to 2077 forced us to take that release date off the table. Expanding a collaborative multimedia universe takes flexibility. Since we knew it would take some time to work out the lore kinks, Mike and the team decided to take the time to examine the rules, line by line, do some more testing, and polish things up. Our art director, the incredible Jay Kovac, also gleefully took advantage of the extra time to work with her astoundingly talented artists and create additional illustrations beyond the initial order. Thus, our current goal to have design, writing, editing, more editing, layout, and printing done and done is sometime in June. They go on to mention that quote, if during these final months we decide the game needs more work, we will work on the game more. Therefore, June is a target and not a promise. Moving on, we have something incredibly awesome from a Cyberpunk 2077 community member. Reddit user Svail underscore Chow 3D modeled his best interpretation of Night City based off of some of the maps and information we have thus far. He's also included a tiny person to give you an idea of the scale of the city. This is amazing stuff and you can zoom in and rotate around the whole map, so if you want a potential taste of the Cyberpunk 2077 map, whether or not it's 100% accurate or not, definitely check this one out. We also have an Xbox One limited edition Cyberpunk 2077 wireless controller that will be hitting the market in the future after it appeared on South African retailer Raru's online store. It's since been taken down, but honestly speaking, Cyberpunk 2077 themed controllers and consoles are probably a safe bet based off how big this game is. There wasn't a picture to go along with the listing, but I'm sure this fan's recreation is somewhere within the ballpark, knowing how much CDPR loves their yellow. 
Next we have an article from The Gamer which seems to be getting a ton of attention lately for all the wrong reasons. In an article titled It's Time to Stop Worshipping CDPR, The Gamer brings up missteps that CDPR has taken and questions why they're so popular. They've even used YouTuber Legacy Killer HD's thumbnails as some sort of weaponization against him and I guess people who make positive videos about CDPR. It's an article that proclaims that CDPR can do no wrong in the eyes of the fans, which is not true because if you look more deeply, there's vocal communities and camps of their fans wanting third person, criticizing CDPR for their policies, and people worry about how they're going to approach social issues. Where criticism or discussion is due, from what I've been seeing, fans are more than happy to add to that discussion. Me personally, I've been critical of the Pacifica demo showing, which I think graphically was not up to snuff, I think the gameplay that they've shown seems a bit flat, and I'm still kind of on the fence about the amount of third person cutscenes that CDPR is planning. CDPR is not perfect, but shaming fans for being fans and digging up old outdated facts that CDPR have since rectified like the did you assume their gender tweet debacle where the employee who posted this was let go or even working conditions which has since made progressions from The Witcher 3's development is apparently null and void. Telling a studio they should be ashamed for transparency especially when it comes to issues on crunch is also pretty counterproductive. Admittance of issues but reminding people that they're working to find solutions as they go should be encouraged and not ostracized. If the developers were as miserable as the media or press claims that they are, everyone would realistically have quit by now. Anyways, I typically don't touch on these topics but this has gotten big enough to where it was worth mentioning. Thanks for watching and for more cyberpunk, join Neon Nation by subscribing to the Neon Arcade.